Sean Dyche is back in the Premier League, now in charge of Everton. It's going to be an interesting end to the season with the club in the midst of a relegation battle, and there's no question Everton have some quality players. This is a youth academy that has consistently let younger players break onto the scene. Our first youth academy player, Elliot Scott, has some attribute resemblances to a young Wayne Rooney. Position-wise, center attacking mid is going to give him the biggest upgrade to his rating, and with just one fixture remaining in the season and survival for the Premier League not yet guaranteed, Scott will get his debut at the senior level. Some significant upgrades to his rating as he now now sits at a 79 overall, but it was Dominic Calvert-Lewin who grabbed the headline, scoring a brace to lead us to safety. It's another year with us staying in the Premier League as we take a look at the league standings. Manchester City winning the title, Aston Villa finishing second, and some more surprises as Liverpool and Newcastle round out the top four. Relegation spots going to Crystal Palace, Southampton, and Bournemouth. Watford and Stoke City securing automatic promotion from the championship. Norwich will be joining them as playoff winners. Another trophy for City as they were FA Cup winners against Brighton in the final. The Carabao Cup going to Liverpool as they defeat Chelsea 3 1. It's another trophy for Real Madrid as they kicked off the season with a 1 0 victory against Eintracht Frankfurt in the UEFA Super Cup. And a treble winning season for Manchester City, defeating Madrid in the Champions League final. Atleti get the win against Bayern in the Europa League, and Azet defeat FCSB in the Conference League. Plenty of appearances this season for Calvert Lewin. It's why he led the club in goals scored. And I'm happy to see Dice reuniting with some ex Burnley players like McNeil and Tarkowski. McNeil with the most assists for us this year. We've got some promising players currently out on loan. Brentthwaite up plus two in his overall to a 71 rating. Moise Keane, of course, on loan at Juventus, up plus two to an 80 overall. And who knows how the rest of Delhi's career is going to get. He went up plus one in his rating to a 77. Quite a realistic end to the season, but we do need to build upon this manager rating in future years. In what will be Dyche's first full season in charge at Everton, we've got to aspire to finish higher in the league standings and not put ourselves in a dangerous spot. But if you're enjoying the content so far, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more rebuilds on the channel. Definitely some changes ahead to the squad with Seamus Coleman dropping in his rating rapidly. Nathan Patterson will take over at the right back spot. And for board objectives, we need to continue signing some younger players into the team, try to finish in a Europa League spot in the Premier League and win the FA Cup. A solid transfer budget of 70 million to start with, but we will see that figure rise with the departure of some players. Moise Keane has had an interesting time at Everton. He's been loaned out to some high-profile clubs like PSG and Juventus, but of all the offers I received, I found the one from Ajax to be very interesting. His 35 million move will have him become a star player for them and take that next step in his career. For the last few seasons, it seems like Ismail Assar has been linked with a number of different Premier League clubs. Still at Watford and putting up some incredible statistics for them in the championship. He's also proven himself at the Premier League level twice, scoring five goals in each of his campaigns. He'll be taking on the number seven for us as he completes a 20 million move to Goodison Park. His contract may have been expiring at season's end as we complete the transfer for less than his valuation. Everton are absolutely in need of a striker with all the injury concerns with Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Dominic Solanke could be a suitable option for us, especially with Bournemouth being relegated. He, of course, is well acquainted with Everton having previously played for Liverpool. The striker signing for 10 million and it's another case where we able to complete the deal for less than his evaluation. We also want to think about the future as we complete a goalkeeper signing. And Michael Cooper has been dominating League One. He's helping Plymouth challenge for promotion and potentially move up to the championship. But with reported interest from Premier League clubs like Aston Villa and championship sides like Norwich, I think three million is considerably less of a transfer fee than one might have expected. His evaluation already at five million. Michael Keane leaving the club as he departs for Aston Villa on a 12.5 million transfer. Answer. We're going to use the rest of our funds to improve upon our youth academy, starting with a four-star, four-star scout who will stay in England for the rest of the season. Our five-star, five-star scout from Estonia will be setting up a network in Australia searching for a physically strong player to hopefully find a talent resembling Tim Cahill, who had some memorable moments for Australia in the World Cup and a long time at Everton. Our final scout will be from Turkey. He's setting up a network in the United States to search for a goalkeeper. Tim Howard left a legacy for the U.S. men's national team, and he's still the Everton correspondent as an international ambassador to the United States. But our season will see it start against Nottingham Forest. Here is the starting 11, staying with the 4-5-1 tactic as we aim to qualify for Europa League football. A 2-1 win in our season opener, but bad news 
as Calvert-Lewin suffers a longer-term injury, leaving him out for a month, and our newly promoted Youth Academy talent out even longer as he suffers a two-month injury. Despite all that, we still had a very strong month of November, winning all of our matches, so we'll check results in January 2024. As things stand, we're challenging for not only Europa League football, but also Champions League football, sitting in fifth. Also changing tactics to a 4-4-2. Solanke's been in great form, and I want to get him involved. Contracts and squad rules are a big issue with this Everton team, just too many players on on important roles, so Damari Gray, despite being in good form for the club, submitted a transfer request and he'll be leaving to Crystal Palace on a free next season. But you may have noticed we've got a semi-finals fixture in the Carabao Cup. Those will be against Manchester City. We win the first leg, courtesy of goals from Patterson and Delhi, but a high-scoring fixture in the second leg put Manchester City on top as they advance to the final. Still a fantastic second half of the season as we see a fourth place finish in the Premier League. Chelsea are the new league winners with Liverpool, City, and us rounding out the top four. Norwich, Nottingham Forest, and Watford will be seeing relegation to the championship. It's Crystal Palace and Southampton to see the return to the Premier League alongside Sean Dyche's former club, Burnley. Liverpool will see a win in the FA Cup, and Manchester City were victorious in the Carabao Cup against Arsenal. Two trophies for City this year as they were Super Cup winners at the start of the season. The Champions League title going to Real Madrid as Newcastle made it all the way to the final. Bilbao defeat Juventus on penalties in the Europa League, and final or see a Conference League victory against Lens. This is what I mean about Solanke being in great form. He was the top goal scorer at the club despite limited appearances. However, it was Calvert-Lewin to place inside the top 15 as Premier League top scorer. Phil Foden leading the way. Two consecutive seasons with McNeil having the most assists at the club, 12 from 43, ranked him as one of the best in the Premier League, just one shy of Mo Salah. And despite an injury that set him back, Scott still saw some growth in his rating up to an 81 overall. Happy to report back on some newly promoted Youth Academy talents. Our player from Australia is Declan Atkins, a 66 rated right back with 81 to 91 potential. Jonathan King, the goalkeeper from the United States, a 62 rated talent, 16 years old, 80 to 94 potential. And finally, our player from England is not yet eligible for promotion, but Declan Stevenson, 57 rated, 85 to 94 potential. With room for improvement as he is shifting over to a right winger. But a big jump up in our manager rating as we're up to 73 and into Champions League football with Everton. It's clear that Deich is a master of the 4-4-2 formation, leading the club back to European football. And things are only looking up moving forward. As for board objectives, we need to slightly decrease the player's salary growth and basically look to replicate results in the Premier League and try to finish in a top four spot. For the Champions League, we need to aspire for a quarterfinal finish. But a massive rise in our transfer budget, doubling to 150 million. Despite interest for Saar, we're going to keep him at the club and look to use those funds wisely, starting with Arnott Danjuma as our first signing. He was close to joining Everton in the most recent transfer window before Spurs swooped in at the last minute. He does have some experience playing in England, featuring for Bournemouth in the championship. And despite not having the most appearances in recent seasons, he has a very good goal to game ratio. More than anything, it's a statement signing showing that we mean business here at Everton the 83-rated player joining on a 40 million transfer fee. Everton have a history of signing players from the Scottish Premier League. Most recently, it was Nathan Patterson from Rangers, but we'll look to bring in Jota from Celtic. The former Benfica man has put up some very respectable numbers in Scotland this season. 15-plus goal contribution, even scoring a couple of those goals in the Champions League. It's going to be a big fee to complete this move, but I think 30 million is going to give us some good squad rotation with potential for him to take over down the left-hand side. But our final addition is someone that Deich is very familiar with. During his time at Burnley, Nathan Collins just completed a big move over to Wolves. Apparently that hasn't worked out for him in this save as he's transferred over to Serie A, joining up with Sassuolo. But with other ex-Burnley players like McNeil and Tarkowski already at Everton, it's time to bring the Burnley band back together. Collins signing on a 25 million transfer fee, significantly more than his evaluation, but he's a good player for the future. With the center back arrival, I felt okay with letting Godfrey leave. He departs to Roma on a 17.5 million move, and Malpe joining up with Nottingham Forest on a 12.5 million transfer. Despite being in fantastic form for Everton, Iwobi is struggling to get into our starting 11, so he leaves to Fulham on a 7.5 million fee. But another season of scouting, we've of course got a network in England for nine months, as well as Scotland for nine months searching for any type of player, and Wales for nine months looking for any type of player. Pretty routine start to the season as we begin our Premier League action against Spurs, and the starting 11 is looking stronger and stronger. 
longer. Bad news though in our season opener as we lose 4-2 to two and also lose Scott to another long-term injury. He's out for two additional months with a broken elbow. Because we still have 65 million remaining in our transfer budget, I think we need to try to improve the squad even more. I'm trying to reach the latter stages of Champions League and I think Connor Gallagher can help us do that. There were some rumors of him joining Everton in January and having just completed a loan spell at Crystal Palace. He's shown that he can play for a number of sides and not just Chelsea. To make matters even better, we were able to bring him in on just 35 million for the transfer fee, about 10 million less than his evaluation because his contract was expiring. If we want to reach the knockout stages of the Champions League, we need to get past Bayern, Athletic Club Bilbao, and Fenerbahce. Mason Mount completely moved to the Bundesliga as he's up to an 86 overall. Bilbao, last season's Europa League winners, completed the signing of Ander Herrera in just the last few seasons, and Issa Diop, a quality talent, has made the move to Fenerbahce at an 81 overall. But we're at the halfway mark of the season. Results-wise, we are very similar to last year. Fifth place, not many points separating us and Manchester City, who lead the league. We have not done the best in the Champions League as Bilbao and Bayern both equal on 11 points. We have done enough to find ourselves in the Europa League round of 32. But from a ratings perspective, the team is developing nicely. One change as Jota takes over at the left mid slash left wing spots. Two players leaving on a free next season, Ducure to Rangers and Yuri Mina over to Monaco. But we'll start our Europa League action against Real Sociedad. They have completed the signing of Grimaldo who returns back to Spain. And they do win the first leg 2-1, but we see a 3-0 result in our home fixture to advance to the round of 16 against Napoli. By far the team in the best form for Italy, Kvara is already at an 83 rating, and that is only going to go up with time. But a 1-1 draw in the first leg, Napoli do enough to get the only goal in the second leg, seeing an end to our European campaign. But still a lot for us to play for this season, as we have an important fixture against Manchester City on the 26th of April. Even on points, a win would be enough to see us to the top of the Premier League stand. We've also got the home support in this one. The squad not in the best of form, but I think we have a chance here as Sar starts things down the right hand side, playing the perfect ball in the middle, and it's our new signing Gallagher who gets in on the goal scoring. A box-to-box -box midfielder, you're going to see him get involved quite a bit in these highlights, as now Calvert Lewin playing the great pass to Tanjuma, another new arrival here in season three, doubling our lead to give us the 2-0 advantage. City are never going to give up though, as Phil Foden, he was the top goal scorer in season one, and he gets one back for City here. Just minutes left to play, we're into stoppage time, and unfortunately, we could not do enough to see City get the equalizer, and we will stay even on points, but City continue to have the advantage on goal difference. With just one fixture remaining in the Premier League season, we need to rely on a little bit of luck, and a Burnley win to even give us a chance at the title. We do our job as we get a 2-1 victory against Crystal Palace, but unfortunately, City will still win the league. Liverpool and Chelsea will round out the top four spots with Brentford, Stoke City, and Burnley getting relegation to the championship. It's a return for Nottingham Forest and Watford, Middlesbrough winning the championship playoff. Spurs will see a trophy celebration as they win the FA Cup against Liverpool. Leeds win the Carabao Cup against Manchester City. Madrid repeating as Super Cup winners against Bilbao. Surprises Leverkusen were victorious in the Champions League. Real Madrid dropping down to the Europa League but defeat Club Bruges in the final. And Celta Vigo get a win against Newcastle in the Conference League. Still some injury concerns for Calvert-Lewin but he was still the club top goal scorer as he ranked in the top 15 for goals in the Premier League finishing third. Holland with 32 from 36. And a good debut season from Gallagher. 11 goals, 11 assists. It was enough for him to rank as the 14th best assist player in the Premier League. Darwin Nunez leading the charge in this category. But some great development from these Youth Academy promoted players. King up plus 8 to a 70 overall. Atkins up plus 5 to a 71. Scott's growth has been slowing down, but he's up plus 1 to an 82 rating. And some newly promoted players, starting with an English left winger. Jack Hurst is a 70 overall talent with 89 to 94 potential. Stevenson has completed that position change to right wing. He's up to a 69 rating and ready for promotion. Reese Ferguson is a Scottish talent, 58 rated. The striker has 84 to 94 potential. And finally, our player from Wales is Adam Green, 57 rated center attacking mid with 87 to 94 potential. Not meeting a lot of our board objectives this year, but we've pretty much stayed steady in all competitions in season four.
Can we do one better in our performance from last season? Not only try to win the Premier League, but reach the knockout stages of the Champions League. As for board expectations, pretty simple this year as we try to sign an English player, win the league title, win the FA Cup, and reach the semifinal of the Champions League. Really no change to our transfer budget as we still have 150 million remaining, and we'll kick off the signings in season four with Charles de Kettler. He's had a tough start to AC Milan, still hasn't scored a goal for them. Everton were actually in the running to sign him last summer along with Leeds before he eventually made the move to Italy. And with the history of Belgian players at the club like Kevin Morales, I was happy to complete this move. It's always going to be a big deal to sign one of Kurumo's highest potential players, 90 million was significantly more than his evaluation of 77 million. We will recoup some of those funds though with a transfer offer from Mikolenko from Manchester United. We get into talks with Eric Ten Hag and try to round that sum up to 27 and a half million, but they were firm on 26 million. I was happy to still receive those funds. Slanky also showing consistent goal scoring is going to make the move to Newcastle United, signing as their number 19 for 20 million. Delhi's off to Germany as he signs for Potterborn on a 17.5 million fee. And Gabamin will be going to fellow English side Brentford on a 6 million move. We need to recoup some squad depth and with Kieran Tierney possibly no longer being the number one option at Arsenal. And certainly not in this save with his transfer to Brighton. I felt like this is a great move to improve in overall down the left hand side. A nice duo with him and Patterson as our two Scottish fullbacks. It's going to be a 40 million move to complete this signing. A little bit more than his valuation, but again, we've got the funds available. Now to complete that objective of signing an English player, another Italian move for Mark Gahey as he transfers to Serie A side Fiorentina. Seems like we're following a trend of signing ex-Chelsea players so far in this rebuild, but he knows his quality, and of course he's got some great potential in career mode. Another 40 million signing as he rounds out our defensive transfers for the summer. But it's Arsenal at Goodison Park to begin our Premier League season. Here is the side that takes on the Premier League as well as the Champions League. And Gallagher continuing his goal scoring from last year as he scores a brace to give us an opening day win. We did receive loan offers for Elliot Scott and I was about to let him go to Leverkusen, but just before the transfer window closed, it's a long-term injury for Connor Gallagher, so Scott will take over in the midfield. For the Champions League, we've got Barcelona, Fiorentina, and Dynamo Kiev. Tammy Abraham, another English player at an 86 overall, has been one of the marquee signings for Barcelona. Kovacic moving for the Premier League back to Italy as he stands at 83 overall for Fiorentina. And finally for Kiev, we've got Denis Popov at 80 overall. We'll check on results January 2026 and we are again are in the running for the Premier League title, just two points behind Manchester City. And this time we will be advancing out of the Champions League group stage. Equal on points with Barcelona, they get the head-to-head -head advantage though. There's certainly some issues with stamina, hopefully we can still see out the rest of this season as we begin the round of 16 against Leverkusen, the side that Scott almost transferred to, but they do have already some great players with Franck Kessier at an 86 overall. We get the 2-1 to one win in the first leg, goals coming from Danjuma and Sar in a 2-2 draw in the second leg, putting us through 4-3 on aggregate up against Manchester City. Of course it had to be them, and it's going to be tough for us to get goals with Ederson at a 91 overall. Fun fact, it looks like they have a pre-gen in this save. Another Brazilian goalkeeper, Carvalho, at an 87 rating. I thought we had a tough couple of matches ahead, but a 4-1 to one result in the first leg and 5-3 to three in the second leg. That looks more like an aggregate score line, but 9-4 to four will put us through to the semifinals against Dortmund. An interesting career for Pogba as he checks off Germany as one of the leagues he's competed in. But the goals continue 4-1 to one in the first leg and a 1-0 victory in the second leg. Means that we'll face Juventus in the Champions League final. Another case where we're going to go down to the final Premier League match day to decide the title. However, However, this time we decide our future. As long as we win, we will be winning the title, and that we will. Goals from DeKettler and Scott gives the 2 0 victory against Leicester, and finally, Everton return as Premier League winners. It's their first league title since the 86 87 season and their 10th overall. Here's a final look at the top half of the league standings relegation spots going to Brighton, Southampton, and Middlesbrough. Bristol City and Brentford securing automatic promotion from the championship, along with Bournemouth, who win the playoffs. Not a bad outing for from us in the FA Cup as we lose to Chelsea in the fourth round. Liverpool win the competition against Manchester City. A surprise loss to Hull City in the third round, the Carabao Cup with Liverpool again winning a trophy against Newcastle. More dominance from Madrid in the UEFA Super Cup as they defeat Champions League winners Bayer Leverkusen. PSG win the Europa League and Ajax win the Conference League. A huge first season from De Kettler at Everton, 29 goals across 49 appearances. 
It was enough for him to rank as the sixth best goal scorer in the Premier League, Holland again winning the Golden Boot Award, and DeKettler also had the most assists. He ranks as the seventh best assist maker in the Premier League, Danjuma also getting into the top 15 at the 12th place spot. Really just one player for us to look back on, Moise Keane has made the move from Ajax over to Bayern in recent years. But there is a new star player at Everton, his name is Elliot Scott. What a comeback he's had in his career, battling through injuries and now featuring in a Champions League final. He is going to open up the scoring with one of those long range efforts. You don't see it too often in these highlights where I'm scoring long range goals, but when they do happen, they are spectacular. Just a finesse shot effort into the top right hand corner. I don't think there's any goalkeepers that'll be stopping that one. With the lead intact, we're trying to showcase some good defensive prowess, but it was just a lot of tenacity from Juve to get a goal back just before the halftime break. It's Pedri who makes a big move to the Italian side. Scott again now showcasing some of his elite dribbling ability, a far post finish to give us a 2-1 to lead in the 66 minutes. But again, just minutes later, it's Juve breaking through our defense, just not very good positioning from Tierney as he let Vlahovic onside. And in the final moments, we are all level. Onana playing through to Kettler, and this was a very controversial take. I thought the defender should have gotten this fairly easily, but to Kettler did not give up on the chance, and Charles will give us a 3-2 lead in the 85th minutes. This replay really shows how poor of an effort that was from Laporte. It was a routine clearance. But we're not going to ask questions. That's a double for Everton this season as Pickford lifts another trophy. Sean Dyche taking his 4-4-2 tactic to the highest stage of European football where we win it all.